Hello again. Hello. How are you? How's it going? How's your life? Today we have my November wrap up. The wrap up of November. By the way, welcome back to my channel. Hi, my name is Dordaline. You may not know me, but now you do. This is my wrap up for November where I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight books, kind of. My cat is uh, laying down in the wrapping paper for my TBR, which if you didn't watch, I will link. I unwrapped a bunch of books. We have about eight books. One of them I didn't technically finish, so I don't have that much to say about it, but the rest of them I do. I did do reading vlogs for most of these books. I will link those down below. Go check out those videos for a fuller, more in-depth review. I'm just basically going to like wrap up these things, okay? Also, can you please stop, sir? Can you chill? Thank you so much. Also, if you're new to my wrap ups, how it works generally is we talk about the books from my least favorite to my ding -ding, most favorite books. Okay, let's get started. In last place, I wrote it down on this. In last place, even though it's not really the last place, I'm only putting it there because I haven't finished it. That is The Hunger of the Gods by John Gwynn. Started this, I probably got about halfway through and then I ran out of time because I had to start filming another video or another reading vlog. So I'll have to go back to it eventually. I should have added it to my TBR actually. I'm not gonna say too much. I love it, dude. I love John Gwynn so much. He's an angel sent from above. Okay, I have a book called Lucky girl by m rickett this month honestly wasn't that bad it was just kind of like meh most of these books are just like meh so lucky girl in case you don't know it's about this girl named ro right ro has had like a hard life but every christmas she meets up with these people and they all kind of like have this like little secret santa evening thing one evening one of the guests tell the story about how when he was a boy he you know ran into krampus and there was like this huge creepy thing about his like house and his estate and everyone was like what the fuck dude is that like actually fucking true like the way you said it the way you told that story it seems like it was fucking true and he was like no it's like a story it's all just a story it's like no big deal and then the next christmas he gives our main character ro something that proves that that story was indeed kind of true or seemingly true suspicious the reason i didn't like this was because the ending was so rushed the author decided to just tell us everything rather than show us and that just like really annoyed me and i wasn't a fan i would recommend it if you're into like krampus type stuff or if you want something that's like really short and easy it's only like a hundred pages long beware the ending might sort of disappoint you least favorite and next i have the patreon book club pick for november and that was misery by stephen king now I did a whole ass reading vlog for my Patreon. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested. Like all of these books are fine. There was just certain things about them that I didn't like. The main character, the dude that we're supposed to sympathize with the entire novel, I was like, I don't give a flying fuck, Paul. The whole book, Paul is just like so misogynistic, so entitled, so like pretentious. And like, I get it, Annie is crazy. Annie is a fucking mess. Like, I get it. But also at the same time, like you have to give like, like props where props are due like annie's an icon annie annie changed the game she revolutionized this type of thing i would say that this book for me is like a solid three stars by the way if you don't know what this is about first of all where have you been second of all it's about this guy named paul sheldon he gets in a car accident and he's saved by this woman named annie he thinks it's fine and then you know figures out that annie is actually just like his number one fan and actually is like stalking him it's going to uh hold him hostage in her home while he's ill and like injured there's more to it but like guaranteed you've seen the movie guaranteed you've heard of this like you know what it's about i would say if you're interested in reading this give it a shot but also I would say if you haven't seen the movie, maybe just watch the movie because the movie is like basically the same thing, like less misogynistic in my opinion. <laughs> and then let's talk about Secret Santa by Andrew Schaefer. Now I didn't dislike this book. This book was fine. Was it the best thing I've ever read? No. Was it like revolutionary in any way? No, <laughs> but it was fine. It was fun. 
It was a nice little mystery kind of moment. My cat is losing his shit. To me, it kind of read more like a murder mystery. Now, in case you don't know, this is what a girl named Ro, she gets a job at this, <laughs> this publishing house basically by lying. She shows up to this interview and it's like this very prestigious publishing house, right? And the guy that's interviewing her, like the, like the CEO or whatever, is like, what the fuck qualifies you to have this job? Just tell me one thing. And she's like, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of like an editor. And he was like, okay, but like of what? And she's like, I don't know, like genre fiction. And he's like, that's so fucking stupid. Get out of my office, you fucking peasant. And then he fucking dies, like right in front of her. And so when they're like, okay, but like, what did he say to you? She says, oh, he, he gave me the job. <laughs> and so she starts a new job as like the editor in chief or whatever. Basically it goes from there. This was a lot of fun, like I said, but I wouldn't say that I'm like blown away by it or anything, you know? Now let's talk about The Vessel by Adam Neville. The Vessel was fucking wild. It was fucking crazy. You guaranteed you saw me talk about it, but let me just like reiterate it one more time, just one more time. It's about this woman named Jess, right? Jess is kind of also just like down on her luck. You know how it starts. Their good luck has run out. Their bad luck is just getting started. Jess basically is starting this new sort of job as like a caretaker, right? Or as like a care worker in this woman's home. So she goes there for on her first day of work. Everything seems kind of like cool from the outside, you know? But then when she goes inside, the house is like a fucking disaster. It's like a hoarder's mess, right? So Jess goes in, the mess, but she meets the old woman who she's supposed to be taking care of. Florence, the woman who is getting off of her shift says, don't get too fucking close, bitch. Don't get close. And she's like, what are you talking about? This old woman is so sweet and nice. I'm gonna care for her so well. So she kneels down to get like close to Florence and like to talk to her. Just like, oh my God, Florence, your garden is stunning. Uh. And then Florence fucking backhands her, like literally fucking takes her by the head and starts shaking her by the hair. Like she's shaking her head and like it takes two people to get her out of her hair. And Jess is like, what the actual fuck? And like this, this old woman, this Florence woman will spit, will bite, will fucking grab, will hit at any chance that she fucking gets. And so not only does Jess have to work in this like hoarder fucking house, but she has to like be around this crazy fucking woman who like will hit her and shit. It's a nightmare. And then to make things even worse, Jess has to take her daughter in to work with her one day, right? And so she takes her in and she's like, don't fucking go near that old lady. But of course her daughter goes near the old lady and the old lady is like the nicest fucking person to her daughter. And she's like, this is fucking suspicious. This is fucking weird. I don't trust this. Basically it goes from there. It's like, it's crazy. It's wild. I love the cover for this book. I thought it was really fun. I liked the characters. I loved the tense motions and moments of the book. You really feel sort of like trapped uh, when you're in Florence's like presence and in her house. Not only that, but like also at the end of the book, there's like this whole thing where you're like, oh my God, it all makes sense. And it's like literally crazy. I really liked it. I would say if you're into horror, if you're into like old people being creepy type stuff, check this out. You're really gonna like it, I think. Next, let's talk about Krampus by Brom. I didn't expect this book to be so high up on my list, but like here we are. I think the reason I'm giving this book such a good placement is because of how stunning the artwork is and how much I enjoyed literally every aspect of this except for Jesse kind of the ending, but we'll get there. This is about this guy named Jesse, as I'm sure you know. He is like a deadbeat is trash or whatever. And then he gets involved with Krampus and Krampus's feud with Santa Claus. By the way, also Santa is literally a fucking daddy. Let me show you. Look at Santa Claus and tell me you are not just like, oh my God. Like, look at him. He's literally a daddy. <laughs> when I saw that, I was like, listen, I would be on, I would be on team Santa simply for, for this guy. Like he's kind of hot. Anyway, uh, Jesse basically, like I said, gets involved between uh, Krampus and Santa in their like little feud moment. I really liked this book. I liked the experience of reading it. I liked learning about Krampus. I liked learning about the people associated with him, et cetera, et cetera. And I also really loved watching Krampus and his little like group of dentured servants. I loved watching them go around like house to house and trying to like convince people to like worship him. 
It just like literally just terrifying people. I thought it was really cute and really funny. But then also at other points, I thought it was like kind of sad. And like I said in my reading vlog, which I will link, Krampus gives me slew foot vibes because they're very, very similar in terms of like their origins. And I think also they're like, messages or whatever i really liked this if you want like a christmas book and you want something pretty to look at this is a good this is a good pick two books left we have of course a merry little fucking meet cute by julia murphy and sierra simone listen this was the only romance novel i read this this month and oh my fucking god i loved it so much by the way i did a reading vlog for this i will link it down below this is about this girl named b b is uh what they would call a sex worker she's a sex worker okay she has a little only fans she has like a little side thing she's making money and she's getting naked and she's being a hoe and she loves it she loves all of it she's like fulfilled then we have this other guy named nolan nolan is like basically a has-been like he was once really really big back when he was a teenager because he was in this like boy this boy band thing or whatever but then he got into the scandal where he was caught like having like an orgy or something and people were like holy fuck this guy's like literally a fucking pervert that's disgusting so now he's kind of just like doing whatever he can right b a porn star a sex worker ends up being cast as the main female lead in a hallmark movie alongside fucking no lead <laughs> let me tell you basically the whole thing of the novel is like these two can't fuck but they want to and oh my god it was stunning it was stunning like i had such a big crush on b and nolan like it's hard to say which one i like more because they're both like literally so hot but this book was like dirty it was fucking filthy and i lived i lived for every fucking moment of it i oh my god i was a stan the first fucking page the first moment like when it started i was like well this is my life now. I'm going to spend the rest of my life talking about this book because it was so fucking fun. It was so cute. Not only that, but like the fat wrap, stunning, loved it. Love a good fat bitch. I also love a fat bitch who like owns her sexuality and like really comes into her own. And that's exactly what B is and I love it. 10 out of 10, would recommend. Please check this out if you haven't already. Guaranteed though, you already have. But the last book, and maybe the only book I really haven't talked that much about in terms of like reading vlogs, is The Laws of the Skies. This was maybe like one of the most fucked up things I've ever fucking read. It was hor horrifying horrifying like i went into it being like this could be cute and fun because the <laughs> because the book says on the back a mixture of blair witch and winnie the pooh and you think like okay that's ridiculous and like that's got to be cute and fun and but also like maybe like a little bit scary no there is no cuteness there was only scary and dread inducing horror oh my god i would not describe this as the blair witch project meets winnie the pooh I don't know what the fuck that's about, but that's not what this book is. So this is about, I think, a group of 12 children and then three adults, like three chaperones, going on this like camping trip. We're following all of the children along with this uh, other kid that's in the group. Uh, and he is kind of like the weirdo, right? It's always like that one kid where you're like, the fuck happened to you? Like, what the fuck is going on with you and your childhood? <laughs> so that's this kid. This kid sees a snail and decides to stomp on it, like literally crush it in its shell uh, and kill it. And everyone's kind of like, what the fuck is going on with this kid? Like, why is he even here? And basically what ends up happening is that this child starts killing everyone. And listen, okay, I'm not gonna give anything away because I think it's best if you go in like as blind as possible, but we know at the beginning that no one gets out alive and we know that it's this fucking kid and the way that this book unfolds it will make your fucking heart fall into your asshole my heart is still in my asshole like it's really 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 disturbing so i'm, I'm telling you right now okay if you don't want to read about children dying horrifically in graphic detail these children not only just like reading about them physically dying but also reading about their mental processes while they're dying do not read this book don't do it if you value children don't read this book don't do it don't do it don't do it it will fuck you up I think that was like the worst part of the book. I mean, not like worst, but like one of the most disturbing parts of the book was how in depth the author went 
into really relaying the the innocence of these children as they're being like murdered as they're dying by accident as as they're literally choking on their own blood the innocence and the like the confusion and ignorance of it is what really got me got me and had me fucked up was like these people don't even understand that they're dying that they're being hunted you know death is even this thing that could be permanent they they have no concept and that's what's fucking horrifying about this book the most horrifying thing about it actually uh is the ending the ending of the book is like you okay 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 the ending of the book you go into it, right? And you're like, okay, yes, work, work, work. <laughs> Honestly, I was kind of like, yay, this is good. But the more it goes on, the more you start to realize that like, even, even in the ending, it's still as horrifying, if not more horrifying. Because it's, I can't, I can't even say, I can't even say, because I don't want to spoil anything, but the ending of the book is truly one of the most disgusting and disturbing and grotesque things I've ever read in my entire life. Maybe the most grotesque thing I've ever read in my entire life, because it really, it really goes, you know? Like the author was like, you wanted this to be scary and disturbing and fucked up, bitch, don't you fucking worry, I have you, I got you, you're in my clutches and you're gonna sit here and you're gonna read this, you're gonna listen to it. And that's like, like literally what I had to do. I like, I sat there just in awe, just like, when is this gonna stop? Because it feels like you're one of them. It feels like you're in those woods. It feels like you're part of that group and it's horrifying, it's horrifying, it's horrifying. Listen, maybe, maybe it's not gonna be as scary or as grotesque or disturbing to other people, but to me, I was fucked up, fucked up. Five stars though, literally the best thing I read all month. Maybe one of the best things I've read all year. It was so fucking good. Um, also, the audiobook is on Scribed and it was like four hours long. Like it's not a long book at all. 10 out of 10, would recommend. I loved it. Just like, please check out the trigger warnings before you read it because it's a lot. It's a lot. My friends, my family, my familia, thank you so much for joining me for these beautiful wrap up things. What? I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books, what you thought of them. Let me know if you're going to read The Laws of the Skies or Merry Little Meet Cute. I would love to know. Don't forget, of course, to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit. We talk about creepy shit. We talk about the laws of the skies, children dying and fat bitches getting fucked. We talk about those things. Okay. And shit. Thank you so much for being here and spending this time with me. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, see you later. In my next one, I'm gonna be starting my um, end of the year content next week or maybe even this week, I can't remember. Um, but yeah, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Bye, see you later.